Friday, and I wanted to say a couple of things before I bring a spiritual thought, a devotional for today. First is, you know that the stay-at-home order is expiring as of June 8th, and there are different kinds of guidelines for that for gatherings. And a group of people of the lead team and the staff, along with other people in the congregation, have been looking at various things related to that. And so a statement uh, that is going to come out in the next uh, day or so that will just give the stages of our gathering and what we think that will look like as we return to something like that. Of course, as you have realized, as we've all realized, uh, news and, and understanding of things change from week to week, it seems. So we're just wanting to keep that open, and at the same time, we want to keep an open communication. We really invite any kinds of input that you want to give us related to that, and we just want to stay uh, unified in our thought and our belief that we are the church and that the church has never stopped meeting, uh, but we all long to be uh, back in gatherings in the building, and we're just trying to figure out how to do that together. So take a look at that. We hope that will be helpful. Um, I also just want to say that we are going to delay the 828 sermon series until uh, the next week. So this week is June 7th, uh, is the beginning of what was going to be the beginning of that. But I'm going to talk uh, briefly on a topic that is all on our mind, which is the issue of, of racism. And I'm titling this uh, sermon, Jesus and Racism. As you can imagine, the scriptures are full of information on that and I hope that you'll join that on Sunday that's going to be actually a live uh, sermon moment uh, as you probably have discerned a lot of our messages have been taped ahead of time and that's why I've been able to uh, tape it outside and bring it to you from that kind of vantage point but there really is no substitute for talking in a live uh, format I just find that that's when we can be our, our real selves and bring some of the emotions, which I think that this moment really requires. So I'm going to be sharing from uh, Mark 11 and Ephesians 2 about how Jesus breaks down dividing walls and what that means for us as a church. I'm going to share a little bit of my own personal story as I was growing up here in Muskegon. And I hope that you will join us uh, together because as we go forward thinking about this particular topic, it's going to be important to take this moment, which is one that we're all thinking about, and make some commitments that will help us uh, to, to move forward. And, and more importantly, help our relations uh, with African-American brothers and sisters and really combat something that derives from the great sin of America, which is the sin of slavery. So I hope you'll join us on that. Today, I, I, I want to bring a devotional note from Romans 8:28 and hope to relay it also to what's going on relative to what's going on in the in the world. Last week I uh, last Monday I talked about Romans 8:28 which reads like this God works all good all, God works good for all things for those whom he loves who are called according to his purpose. And I had talked about the sovereignty of God in that and I think that one of the things I would just say about this moment is that this tremendous evil in which a person was murdered before our very eyes is in some ways being changed into evil pursuits here and there, but in other ways it's been uh, managed for good. As people have raised their voices, we have heard what they've had to say and it's been a powerful thing for us to hear. Uh, one of the things that we're posting almost immediately online is I had an interview uh, yesterday with uh, J. Ron and Sarah Jackson, who are uh, brothers and sisters here in our fellowship. And I, I just have to tell you that when I did that interview and just listened, I just really tried to listen, some of the experiences that they've had, the pain that they've had, had was almost inconceivable to me and yet very good for me to hear. Helped me to understand things in a new way and I thought that I had understood things pretty well but there's always something to learn. And so one of the things that we have to think about when we think about God's sovereignty in this 
is that we, we always have to bring our situations before God. We have to trust him in and through this circumstance. So as we move into the 828 series, I've been saying I would really like to encourage people at 828 a.m. and 828 p.m. to say, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. One of the reasons that we do that is because we experience in this world the brokenness and the fallenness of the world, the brokenness and the fallenness that are resident in the human soul that leads to people enacting things, systems and actions that create ongoing problems and evil for people. And so what, what God is about is he's about reforming the human soul. And that's what the gospel is all about, that he's, he's working from the inside out. So he, he helps us to see and understand what's at stake in Romans 1 through 3, that all have sinned and fallen short of the very nature of God, the glory of God, who God is. But that by faith through grace, we're, we're able to see that God has given us his son who has died on our behalf. And he makes access, that, access to that uh, uh, something that all people can access. And we see that in Romans 4 through faith. Faith is something that we all can have. And so begins the process of the, the reformation of the human soul so that we're no longer enslaved to sin, but we're able to live into the life that God has called us to. And so as we do that in our human life, so we, we see that as something that we're called to in other kinds of things, in our church body, in our local community, in our state situation, nationally and globally. And so as we, as we look at it, it's not an either or. We are called as people who have been saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ to live that out in the world. It's not an either or. It's not either you believe in a gospel that is simply about saving people's souls or you're involved in a what people have called a social gospel, it's both and. We both are saved and we're called to be uh, agents of the kingdom of God. I think this is one of the most powerful things that we can see coming out of this moment. The good that God is bringing out of this is that the people of God are seeing all of the brokenness of this world and we're called to address it. So I'm really actually looking forward to talking with you on Sunday about one of the most difficult topics imaginable and seeing what God will do as we move into our next sermon series, 828. The Lord bless you today. May you wake up each day knowing that God calls you to live out his gospel with the justice of God. Amen.